Hello folks, in this video we are going to talk about management and diagnosis of choroidal detachments. Choroidal detachments may be detected clinically through ophthalmoscopy. Patients with small peripheral serious detachments may have no symptoms or may show a small myopic shift. They may also present with angular closure with anterior displacement of the ciliary body legs and iris. Hypotony, maculopathy, is also a condition that can be found. First test we can do to assist in the diagnosis of choroidal detachment is wide field retina camera imaging, which enable documenting of more peripheral choroidal detachments. Gonioscopy may also be used to confirm the pres presence of secondary and goplosure glaucoma. Supracoroidal space may be detected with ultrasonography during a choroidal detachment. <coughs> B scan ultrasonography may be used to differentiate serous and hemorrhagic choroidal detachment because the fluid in the serous detachment is more hypoecogenic than blood. Ultrasonography can also be used to determine the dynamics of blood and hemorrhagic detachments. Enhanced depth imaging, OCT or swept source OCT, may also enable visibility of the suprachoroidal layer in some healthy eyes. However, in eyes with pathology, most of the times the suprachoroidal layer is not visualized. High resolution magnetic reson resonance imaging may also be used to determine the presence and underlying cause of choroidal detachment. It is useful for pinpointing the exact location of fluid leakage and differentiating between scleral thickening and choroidal edema. MRI also may be used to detect infiltrating and intraocular masses. About the management, it is important to wait until complete lysis of blood clots before any drainage can be considered, usually mm -hmm. as an average 15 days. As soon as diagnosis is made, a start of medical therapy with topical psychoplegia and intensive corticosteroid drops may be initiated. High dose oral steroids may be started if topical therapy does not improve the condition or if the choroidal detachment is severe. If patients have hypotony secondary to topical antihypertensive medications, those should be stopped immediately. In patients presenting with angle closure, it's important to differentiate between a case of pupil block that require, requires peripheral iridotomy and a choroidal detachment that's causing a shallow anterior chamber and iris apposition. <coughs> As we talked, a conservative approach can be chosen in mild to moderate cases and detachment may be closely observed until it resolves. Drainage of serous fluid or blood is indicated when there is a flat anterior chamber with lenticular corneal touch, non-resolving detachment with conservative treatment, central apposition of the retina, or severe ocular pain with elevated pressure. In summary, choroidal detachments may be evaluated with wide field photography, gonioscopy, <coughs> ultrasound, or MRI. Management may be conservative or surgical. See you in the next video.